All right, folks, welcome back to Politically Homeless. I'm Dave, and uh, I've decided again to bring back um, this pastor who really did a great job last time he was on the show. First time ever that uh, I've had Pastor Adam Fannin on, and this will be the second time. Pastor Adam is from Jacksonville, Florida, and he's the pastor of Law of Liberty Baptist Church. And uh, he got a lot of great positive comments last time we we spoke about a number of topics um but really what we were trying to get across is that Christians don't have to uh, believe a certain thing about a certain geographical location um and I think uh, we made our point pastor welcome back uh, thanks for being here hey thanks for having me back Dave this is exciting all right so today's topic uh, this is not social security right? We're not going to be talking about Social Security or Medicare. But um, within the Christian world right now, I consider this kind of like a third rail, <laughs> because uh, in a lot of churches in America right now, um, uh, people are talking a lot about uh, the 2024 presidential race uh, and uh, the two major candidates. You've got uh, Donald Trump and uh, Joseph Biden. Uh, you've also got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. out there, as well as a third party candidate and you probably got a couple of other folks libertarians and green party and so forth i see you got a nice graphic up there yeah uh, yeah these are your only options <laughs> there is no one else put on the blinders <laughs> left or right what's it going to be oh uh, well um are these uh, let, let me ask this question of you are, are these two guys pretty similar you think overall uh, well, actually, I think they're just about identical. They work for the same masters. They both are false Christians. You know, it's sad because the days are long gone where we live in a country that Bible believers actually have a political candidate that we can trust in, mm -hmm. that we actually have somebody that we know for sure is born again. They have a clear testimony of only trusting in Jesus for salvation. Those days are long gone. Many Christians are looking to politics for the solution, and unfortunately, the left and the right are almost identical on most things when it comes to the spending in wars and adding the Department of Defense private contractors, paying for abortions in other countries and in our country. I mean, the, the Christian nation concept is gone. And that's debatable. Was it a Christian nation? Well, many of them had a different view. Um, I believe God did divinely use America and allowed us political freedom so that we could have religious freedom. And through that, we've sent missionaries all over the world. And we've had generations and generations of true Bible believers. And I'm very thankful for that. But the good days are gone, so to speak. But it's no different than it was in the time of Isaiah or Jeremiah, Ezekiel, or even in Jesus. Those same days are still here. There's political oppression, and voting for a candidate will not fix the spiritual problems that our country faces. So are these two guys the same? Yeah. In a lot of ways, they both have accusations of perversion. They both have uh, children that also have criminal corruption, uh, preferred deals using their political office to uh, set up a corporation. There's a lot of things that they're almost identical on, and yet we've been deceived. You know, it's the the two wings of the same bird of prey, and Christians are are boxed in. I always say that we better vote for Lucifer, or the devil might get voted in, <laughs> and that's what we're looking at here today. And no one votes for the high quality Christian candidate anymore. They just say we have to vote against the bad guy, right. and that's where we're at. Yeah. So um, you pastor a church, obviously, here in the state of Florida. Uh, Florida, I would, I would I, I'd say Florida is Trump country for sure. Um, yeah. you can you can maybe argue otherwise, but uh, I drive around. i'm I'm in Southwest Florida, and there's a, a lot of rural uh, territory uh, away from Fort Myers that I travel. And I see all of these uh, Trump, flags and banners flying. I see the American flag, and then I see the Trump flag. Sometimes I see the Trump flag with the Gadsden flag, which which is really interesting. Um, but I, I'm thinking, you know, there must be a couple of folks in your church, uh, Pastor, that uh, are probably uh, Trump supporters. Is, is that true or not? 
Well, our church is, we have an open door policy for most things. Um, obviously we don't want, you know, um, you know, I don't, we don't have, you know, have a check at the door. Did you vote Democrat? Who did you vote for? (laughs) Uh, If somebody wants to vote for Trump, I'm not going to keep them out of the church. Or if they vote for Biden, I'm not going to keep them out of the church. I do believe in Christian liberty. And I really do believe that every head of the house, every father needs to lead as the Holy Spirit and his conscience leads him. And so if there were a man in the church that said, listen, uh, you know, I understand your views, but I just feel like we need to vote. I'm not going to, you know, kick them out, uh, talk down to them, preach a sermon against them. You know, uh, my political views are a little bit different than most pastors. Most conservative Christian Baptist pastors are Republican, period, Mm -hmm. and they vote for everything Republican, even if it's unfortunately evil and wicked. Right. And I have to vote my conscience, which unfortunately, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah. <laughs> Draw a blank. Well, I had a gentleman on uh, the show uh, a couple of weeks ago by the name of Mike Termott, and uh, he is a libertarian. He's running for president, currently involved in the uh, nomination process with the Libertarian Party. I'm keeping an eye on you know his progress. Um, I agreed with a lot of what he had to say. Um, he's for drastic reductions in, um, you know, all of these, uh, federal agencies and departments, elimination of things like the department of education. And I was just cheering, you know, yeah. and these are things, by the way, that conservatives used to talk about. Well, um, sure. That was Reagan's talking points. Right. And Ron Paul did a great job of reviving that and reminding us where we came from and what a true conservative ought to be. Um, You know, I don't believe the solution is political. I believe it's spiritual. Hence, I have this verse up, pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We need Christians to go out and knock doors and preach the gospel instead of standing on a street corner, waving a sign for a guy that they hope will fix their problems. And inevitably, the taxes are going to continue to go up. The debt is going to go up. I mean, you know, you go to Publix, it's going to cost you a hundred bucks for that cart of food, you know, a couple yeah. of bags, right? Right. I mean, these are the real life problems that we face and voting just absolutely cannot fix it anymore. We're, we're beyond that. Now, and Pastor, I like the concept of libertarianism and reducing yeah. government, uh, but you know, we live in a two party state. They mm-hmm. can't let us, they can't let us have a third party guy get in there. Right. Now, listen, you have uh, you still have the picture of uh, Trump and Biden up there. I don't know if that, that you're doing that on purpose. Uh, there we go. Oh, I'm sorry. That was unintentional. Yeah, Because when you said you had some scripture up there, I was like, I'm still looking at Trump and Biden. This is sorry disappointing to me. Uh, Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but um, no, uh, the Libertarian Party uh, has, I would say, I would I would agree with about 80 to 90 percent of what they talk about. Uh, Christians. Uh, sometimes get a little bit, um, shall we say, squeamish when you start talking about legalizing drugs or um, opening up the border. Now, the Libertarian Party, I think, has done a little bit of a pivot on the border situation where um, where they believe the country is now under attack to some degree with uh, those who are coming over illegally. So they're looking at it now as this is actually a national security issue. This isn't just us wanting to bring folks in to be hardworking, which is fine. I don't I don't have a problem with people coming into the country um, wanting to work, wanting to flee oppression. I think if you look at our history as a country, um, at the turn of not this last century, but the prior century, there are people coming here from all over the world um, who are finding refuge, economic refuge, um, political asylum from some really terrible people. And I think the concept of America, um, we were kind of like the shining city on a hill. Now it Mm -hmm. seems as though we're like, hey, we've got welfare benefits here. We've got NGOs ready to get you to where you need to go once you get across the border. Catholic Charities, by the way, is getting, I don't, I don't know about billions, but they're getting millions of dollars to do this stuff from the government. And remember, we're, we always hear about separation of church and state until the church is now serving the state. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, first of all, I have to take to task the concept of the church. Yeah, I'm mean, sorry. <laughs> no, well, no, and this is a common misconception because the Bible teaches local churches. Every mention of it is churches, plural, singular, individual, local. There is no universal church. That's what Catholic means. Many politicians will get up and they'll give Christianity a nod and they talk about the state of the church or the church needs to get behind this candidate. And it's like, what church? We're not, you know, church means assembly or congregation. And mm -hmm. when we gather and worship the Lord tonight on a Wednesday night, we are a local church. And if you're in a local church down in your city, that's a separate assembly. It's a separate congregation. Christianity in general in America, unfortunately, is a conglomerate. It's under this big tent concept where we are allowing ourselves to be lumped in together in this very ecumenical movement, along with those that have different Bibles, a different gospel, a different agenda. Uh, one of the men in our church just recently preached a sermon. Uh, we do a men's preaching night once a month, and the title of his sermon was, Your Eschatology Affects Your Works. Now, eschatology is your end times view, and his point is, if you are a Presbyterian or a Catholic, and you're post-millennium or a-millennium, you don't believe the Bible literally when it says Jesus will come back and set up his kingdom, then they believe that they are the kingdom now, and that they have to bring it in by force and by sword, and that affects how you see things politically. There are many so-called Christians that say they believe the Bible, but they don't preach the gospel. The Great Commission is to go out and to preach the gospel. That's what we need laborers for. That's what we're called to do. We're not called to bomb other nations that disagree with us. You'll never see anywhere in the New Testament where we're forcing people to convert at gunpoint or at sword, right? That's a, a crazy concept, but that is a Catholic concept. The Catholics are pagans. The, the Roman Catholic Church are, I mean, you look at the history of origin, I mean, a, a total pervert, uh, Constantine, same weird doctrine. They adopted their pagan doctrine into it, and they said, now we are the church. And so Christianity is very confused when they listen to the news all day, if that's their source of truth and authority. Well, they're going to mix everybody in together because they want everybody to get behind the candidate that the controllers are pushing. And, and we have a problem in America, and that's the secret societies, Freemasonry, the Bible even warned about them. And, you know, they are the ones that are behind the scenes, pushing candidates, pulling the strings. Uh, we even had an anti-Masonic party in America because of the corruption that was happening hundreds of years ago. And that very party, my understanding is that the uh, Republican Party became the Democratic Republicans, and eventually they became known as the Democrats. So the ones that are the Democrats today used to be the Republicans. And then we had the anti-Masonic Party pop up because of, um, well, I believe it was, was it Captain Morgan, um, you know, strange murders going on, political oppression. They knew that they were buying out and, you know, uh, affecting many different areas. So this anti-Masonic Party became be, got popular in America, which became the Whigs, I understand. And then later it ultimately became the Republican Party. And, you know, the Bible warns us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are fake Christians out there that are really part of a secret society, and it doesn't bother them to use the name of Jesus in vain just to get others to do what they want politically. Yeah. And so we're yeah. deceived. Yeah, that's, wow. Um, it's, once you go down and look through all the things that happened, you know, over time and where things have evolved to now, um, you can you can kind of trace the origins of a lot of these problems. But today, um, it seems as though we're really in a, a media driven, social media driven, um, whether you're on X or Facebook or wherever you um, hang out, per se. Um, it's it's this battle. It's a it's a war of words. It's a war of memes now. Um, and the Trump stuff to me um, is it's it's different now because it's there's there's a lot of just insults and put downs for instance i can go over on social media and say i'm a christian and say hey i don't support either one of these guys and someone will come back to me and say well then you're for biden and i said well right. no i'm i'm not for biden biden is is disgusting he's despicable he mm -hmm. he might actually be and i don't know if you agree or disagree he might be a shade worse overall than than trump but um, you know, Howard Phillips, uh, back in the year 2000 ran 
I think as either the Constitution Party guy or the Libertarian guy, he said, these are two cars going over the same cliff at different hmm. speeds. And I've yeah. never forgotten that that phrase. And so the Trump people will come at you and, you know, whether you call it gaslighting or psychological warfare, it really, it, it, it blows your mind. I'm sitting there going, okay, I'm not saying I'm going to vote for Biden. So then you're part of the problem because you're not voting for Trump. And I, I'm I'm enlisting like the CARES Act. I'm going through political stuff. You're, you're talking about a spiritual war. And I understand that overall, if the country was straightened out and we were following Jesus the way we should, and, and we were in churches that were being taught the truth, I'm pretty sure this would turn around overnight. All yeah. the stuff that's going on would just have to turn around. It would it would fix itself. People will take charge of their local communities. They wouldn't be that as concerned. Oh, what's going on in Washington? Oh, well, that's good. Whatever they're doing, I don't really care. Uh, but then I think even at the national level, at some point, as you mentioned, there would be a godly person who would would truly try to be a servant rather than trying to just grift and become wealthy and make their family wealthy. It seems when you look at the Trumps and the Bidens, I mean, that is, like you said at the beginning, that they have that in common, that these politicians, Nancy Pelosi, went to Congress with almost no money, and, and now she's worth millions and millions of dollars. And and this isn't, there's no way this is how the founders had this. And the problem is no no third party can win. I mean, right. you know, unless the Illuminati gets behind the third party, props it up, and they make everybody think this is our guy and he's going to be unique and different. I've personally worked for third parties. Um, when I say I'm a libertarian, I don't mean in political party. I mean in the philosophy of freedom. From a biblical standpoint, I believe that's the closest concept that aligns with the Bible. I'm a Christian libertarian, Christian first, libertarian second. Um, I worked for the Constitution Party back in 2008. I was encouraged and excited, and I knew this was the solution, but then I quickly got disillusioned when I realized it was all about raising money and yeah. buying. And it's just like, we're right back. It's a political problem. The political process is the problem. I know a guy that's running a third party this year. And I'm just not interested in supporting him whatsoever at all. We're right back to square one where it's like, you know, if you're not big enough to buy enough time and get enough attention, then it doesn't even matter whether you exist because everybody says, oh, well, he can't win. So I can't get behind them. We have to pick uh, one of the two. Now, I, I hope you don't mind and I don't want to interfere with your tax status. Just kidding. That's a joke. Uh, but I would like to launch a campaign right now. I, I want to show you who I'm voting for. Um, I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with Mr. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody that will solve the problems. He's he is actually running. Back in two thousand eight, I made this sign. Yeah, <laughs> and I want to tell you, we should vote for nobody. Uh, yeah. This is the answer. This will solve everything. And uh, check this out. Nobody tells the truth. Yeah, keep up. To say say something else so the camera goes back over to you. Nobody will fix the economy. Nobody cares about the poor. Nobody will end the wars. Hey, nobody loves Jesus in Washington. So I, that's oh. why this year I've decided who I'm voting for. Finally, some leadership we can trust. <laughs> Vote for nobody. All right. So that I was about to ask you. So um, a Christian wants to be involved, right? A Christian thinks it's their civic duty. You know, I live in the United States. We're supposed to be a democracy, although we really supposed to be a constitutional republic, but that's a whole other the, the language has been hijacked. Um, anyway, so I want to go and vote, right? Um, just because I think maybe it'll make a difference. Maybe it won't. You're you're saying vote for nobody, which is a great, I, I do have to get the t-shirt. I definitely have to see that. Um, but here's, here's the issue though. Um, if, if we all, now you think if we all stopped voting, um, would that send a message that we don't like any of you people? Um, but somebody would, the the people who have all the special interests, those people or want everything, those would be the people voting and it, it would still go in the wrong direction. Should we just focus on ourselves, our families, our local communities? Maybe we go to a school board meeting. If But then again, if you homeschool, you probably aren't going to a school board meeting. 
Um, what what kind of civic involvement do you think um, the Christian should be engaged in? I'm not opposed to Christian involvement in politics. I do believe we should be in politics, but I don't think it would be, uh, I don't think it should be the priority. There are independent Baptist organizations that go around and they go to all the churches and get financial support so that they can go to Washington and they can lobby so they can give money to the crooks and ask them, remember us on voting day. Yeah. And again, the the process is the problem. It's broken. It's crooked. It's designed to cheat honest people out of their money. And so, you know, should you run for dog catcher? Well, maybe if that's what you feel God's calling you to. But if you're a born again Christian, if you're a Bible believer, you are called to preach the gospel, not run for office. If if I were to run for, you know, imagine if a pastor ran for president, that would be a demotion. I believe being a pastor over a church is one of the highest callings that a man can have. And I believe that being a godly mom is one of the highest callings that a woman can have, guiding the hearts of the next generation. As a dad, God's called you to be a leader a leader among men and women, and to lead in the right way, men of truth, hating covetousness. He says in Exodus, like, we need to set the agenda. I mean, we need to set the standard high. We need to teach biblical concepts. It's our duty to raise the next generation. Most Christians are disillusioned. They've lost the hearts of their children to the world because they let them watch whatever they want on TV or on a phone. They send them off to a communist public school that steals their heart and their mind and perverts their morals. And then their children come back to them as strangers. And most Christians are disillusioned and they feel like there's nothing they can do. And they hear of, the, you know, well, I don't really like Trump all that much. He seems puffed up and he's an adulterer and he's full of pride and he's cocky and he says all these perverted things, but I have to vote for somebody. And then it gets down, it gets so emotional during voting day where they put all this pressure under you, like the bad guy's going to win and, the, you know, they're going to make Christianity illegal. And I've actually seen Christians down in the last wee hours start throwing money toward a campaign to try to get people out there to try to get out the votes. And again, it goes back to, stealing money or really deceiving people out of their money, hoping for a political answer. And it's just not there. We have to get the hearts of our children and of our city. And it's God's word alone that sets people free. That's what law of liberty means. It's God's word. It's his commandment that sets us free. And we need to teach that above all else. Yeah, that that's good. Good teaching right there. Um, but what if, okay, I'm just playing again. I hate to use the term devil's advocate, but I guess it's uh, you more, sound like a Republican when it, you say that. It's very, it's very appropriate, I guess. Um, Cause it, no matter who you're advocating for, it's kind of like the devil's advocate. So it's 2018, right? The economy is, seems better, right? Gas is like two bucks a gallon. Um, we haven't launched, they like to say this a lot, like the Trump guys like to say, well, Donald Trump didn't start any new wars. Right. He didn't start any new wars. Gas was two bucks a gallon. Um, interest rates were low. People could buy a house. Uh, they could buy a car if they wanted to buy a car. Um, it, it wasn't it, it was better at the grocery store, too. I will raise my hand and say yes, because I do a lot of uh, shopping and I've, I've noticed that inflation is just insane. Um, we had two bills that got passed that people don't understand what happened that we spent about $16 trillion in like two, two and a half years, something like that, which inflated the currency and made things go crazy. But people have memories of 2017, 2018, 2019, even the first part of 2020 before really the bottom fell out with COVID and everything. Um, so people say to me, Dave, come on. I mean, Trump, you, you were, you were living much better. I'm sure during, I mean, we bought a house in March of 2020 and we closed and the interest rate was very low and people are paying double, uh, even triple what we're paying on our mortgage right now. Uh, so again, I'm just, I'm just saying what people will say back to me. People I'm sure that will comment on our video here today. People are going to say, well, this is ridiculous. We all know that Trump is better than Biden. What's wrong with you people? Now you're going to discourage people from voting. And then we're going to end up with four more years of crazy Biden, perverted Biden, Biden, uh, 
promoting the rainbow mafia and so forth. And I, I understand what they're saying, although Trump has been doing some of that, too, lately. So Trump has been supporting the LGBTQAIDS, whatever, whatever all those letters add up to. He's been supporting that as well. Let's not forget that. And yeah. although, yeah, he didn't he didn't start any new wars. I remind you, uh, my candidate, Mr. <laughs> Nobody, he will end the wars. Nobody will. Just end like the wars. Trump did. How many wars did Trump stop? Did he pull the troops out of Afghanistan? Did he pull them out of Iraq? Did he stop sending funding to Israel and all these other nations? No. In fact, worse than that, you realize that his actions in the Middle East, that people are calling him like he's a fulfillment of prophecy for the nation of Israel, he is literally setting up the Antichrist kingdom. And mark my words. If you vote for Donald Trump as a Christian, you are voting for him to really put World War III in high gear and to send your sons and daughters to the Middle East to fight a war they shouldn't be fighting. And you will watch what happens in Israel. The Bible says they're going to be, build a third temple. They're going to restore it. And fake Israelites, fake Jewish religion, they will actually reinstate a sacrifice so that they can set up their Messiah a Christ that is not Jesus. And the Bible says that they will persecute and kill biblical Christianity. And that's what you're supporting when you vote for either one of these guys. They're going to make it happen in the Middle East. Yeah, that that's that's terrifying. Uh, and you're are you thinking because of the Abraham Accords that that was um, you know, what what we call that, like a catalyst or really upset. Um, the people who obviously oppose Israel in the region. Certainly, yeah, that's a that's a big part of it for sure. Uh, the Abraham Accords are bringing those three religions, Catholicism, Mohammedism, or Islam, along with uh, Talmudic Judaism. It's bringing those three together. And I remind Christians, biblical Christianity is not part of those three, not at all. We are not Catholic. We don't believe in a universal church. We are not Protestant. We didn't protest and come out of the church. That Catholic church has always persecuted biblical Christianity. They are the ones who, um, through much deception, created and started Islam as it's known today. Muhammad, if you look at the origins and you look at, he was like, what, 25 and his first wife was 42 and her brother was a Jesuit general. Um, you know, creating the propaganda, setting up the armies. It was a political move to try to regain control over Jerusalem. Israel, as it is today, the Jewish religion today, there are many, just like a rainbow, there are many shades of Judaism. Orthodox Judaism is opposed to the Zionist movement. Talmudic Judaism, the Babylonian Talmud is a perverted book it is not of the Bible. It is nowhere near what was taught in the Old Testament. It is not like the Old Covenant, but they are looking for a Messiah that's mm -hmm. not Jesus. That is called Antichrist. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. This is a false religion. It's deceiving the simple-minded that don't know their Bible. But the problem is most Christians are Christian in name only. They think it's a Facebook status, or I went to church as a kid, or uh, but in their heart, they're not trusting Jesus for salvation. They think that they're a good person, and they believe they have a political duty to support Israel, and they are deceived. They are deceived by false prophets. Yeah, um, I'm just listening to you, and I'm, you know, every time in you know, the last time you were on, I learned a lot of things, and I'm just sitting here listening, and um, so. Uh, this country right now is kind of like walking on eggshells when it comes to critiquing Israel or critiquing um, the politics of all of this. And um, you mentioned, you know, um, what what this really is. And a lot of Christians, though, for whatever reason, whether it's I think we talked about dispensationalism last time we talked about how um the Christian religion these days seems to almost respect um, the Jewish religion in a way that they should reserve for, you know, biblical Christianity. It seems, it seems 
that we're so afraid to say, look, um, we have nothing against Israel per se. We're not, we're not like any other country where we don't have any, you know, uh, axe to grind with, with Israel. But when they're doing stuff that, you know, for instance, they're taking our money, right. And they're, and they're using our weapons to kill people. And they're doing the same thing in Ukraine as well. Ukraine and Israel, they're both doing. And it's funny how there's a political divide between those two things where Ukraine, a lot of people on the right side of the spectrum have kind of turned and said, you know, Ukraine, no, we don't want to send them money. But we'll, we're OK with sending. We saw what happened with that budget. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news, but uh, Speaker Mike Johnson, uh, who got a ton of money from a um, was it APAC, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, from what I understand. And all of a sudden, he just voted for everything that Joe Biden wanted, everything and more. I think he gave them more <laughs> money than they actually asked for. And then, Pastor, he said this. He said, you know, biblically, he, he used this phrase. He said, biblically, we're commanded to do this for Israel. It's a, a biblical, he said, it's a biblical admonition. That's how he phrased it. Well, that's a lie. That's not true. You know, um, I know you had uploaded. Let me let me do this. Let me share my screen. If you go to my YouTube channel, Law of Liberty, and on the page, just type in Zionism. Um, I think you re-uploaded this one, the blasphemy of Zionism. I did. Yeah, I did. Because I at the time, I was getting... Um, I have a Christian friend, and uh, he... You know, I think I told you his status and he, we were going a little back and forth on this. And I said, they're just, again, you, you kind of already pointed this out or the, one of the comments on your video where the person said, I sat in churches and I always heard about Israel and, and I heard about hmm. how, you know, we're supposed to almost love the Jews in a way that is different from any other, cause they're God's chosen people, right? That was that's been the line, and you hear it, and that's Mike Johnson saying, "Well, they're well, God's it's become a people. sacred cow, is what right. it is. It's a golden calf." Um, Jews, that phrase means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at here, let me put my screen back on here. So when you, when you look on the YouTube channel, there's this one: Jesus versus Zionism. But then there's this sermon: Semitism, Judaism and Zionism. Now, in this, I show the point that Semites are the, the bloodline of Shem, and right. it includes many people in the Middle East. Most people in Israel that claim to be Jewish today by religion, they are not from Shem. They are from Germany or Ukraine or Russia. That, so Semitism, Judaism, and Zionism. We know that Zionism is a political movement started by Theodore Herzl in the late 1800s. Uh, this It is a Illuminati conspiracy. If you look into it, it doesn't take very much to discover this. Uh, but then also Judaism, that is a religion, and it is not the same as biblical Judaism. Biblical Judaism, Jesus fulfilled the covenant. He's overturned that covenant. You cannot be saved by keeping a Sabbath. You never could. You cannot be saved by slaying a lamb. You never could. It was always believing the Son of God would come, always trusting in him. And I am not alone. There are many other great preachers out there. Uh, Pastor Tim DeVries, Vision Valley, uh, Mount Washington, Kentucky. He's a, a great, another good example of somebody that is preaching this truth in a church that was of, of b believers that were deceived. And uh, I'll pull up his info here because, you know, I, I'm not the only person saying this, and it's important for people to understand that. And here's Pastor DeVries, and if you go to his channel, Vision Valley Baptist Church, he has some playlists for end times, which is going to be very important. and. He and I differ on a few things, uh, and you know that's liberty that we have in Christianity. Their prophecy, check out some of that, mm -hmm. because he deals, and he's a very level-headed, honest guy, and he's dealing very kindly with people, saying, "Listen, we've been told that they are better than us, but that's not true. In fact, isn't that what the Nazis did? 
Yeah. Isn't that exactly what the yeah. Nazis did? And it's interesting yeah. that, uh, you know, I think last time we talked about this guy, Ben Shapiro, who claims yes. he was his parents were Ashkenazi Jews. In other words, they were not religiously Semites, and they were not practicing in any way. They came from Germany. A lot of their family spoke Yiddish, and they converted when he was like nine or 10 years old. All this is on Wikipedia. You can go and look it up for yourself. So they converted to the religion of a book called the Babylonian Talmud. Now, I warn you, the Bible warns us about Mystery Babylon. Mm. That is a physical city. It's the end times city called Jerusalem. When you look at the description there, it is Jerusalem. They will set up a false Christ, and they will deceive the whole world, and God will judge that city. Yeah, and, you know, as you were talking, and I know you you explained um, the difference uh, between, you know, being a, being a Semite, but um, people immediately, they're going to hear you and I talking negatively, not negatively, just realistically about uh, Israel and about the Jewish people that are in Israel, or just just this topic. I mean, not even just scraping the surface of this topic. How dare you talk about this? You guys are anti-Semitic. That's what, and and it's happening everywhere, even to people who just want to ask questions like, "Hey, where is this money going?" The accountability. I mean, the same thing in Ukraine, where you send money to Ukraine. And people will call you a Putin puppet. You must love Putin. Um, no, I'd like to see this money stay here in the United States. Well, then you're an isolationist and you don't understand America's role around the world. And so, you know, I don't know what you, how you break through to these people. That's, I think, the point I'm trying to make here. Well, here's an important distinction from the Bible. Once you're saved, you're in Christ, and there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. So he's literally saying there is neither Jew. There's no more somebody that can say, I'm a Jew. And it's like, well, you can say that, but you're without Christ. And the point of being a Jew was that you were looking for Christ. And now that Christ has come, there is, there's nothing left in that religion, he's literally, it says he's destroyed that covenant. It, it's whack as old, and it's, it's gone away. He's he's eliminated it. In fact, in Galatians 3, he says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So we are God's chosen people, those that have chosen to put their faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. We are elect. You know, it's the selection. Uh, you think about what does it mean, the election in the Bible? What happens every year? Well, we have we have this election that happens, right? Uh, here, here's an election, right? We The candidate puts out the call. Vote for nobody, right? <laughs> Vote for my guy. Uh, they've put out the call. Vote for me. So I've decided, okay, I'm voting for that guy. I've made my selection. I am the electorate. I'm the elect. So mm -hmm. what elect in the Bible means is those people that have selected God. I've believed in God. You know, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The call has gone out to the whole world. Anybody can be saved. Whosoever believeth, God's not a racist. He is not a respecter of persons. This phrase is found Old and New Testament multiple times. God does not favor a bloodline over another bloodline. What does God honor? Faith. What does God respect? Those that trust in him. The covenant has always been by faith. It's never been by a, by a bloodline. There is prophecy yet to be fulfilled in the nation that was once called Israel and now is called Israel again, thanks to Baron Rothschild in the Balfour Declaration. There is prophecy yet to be fulfilled in the city that is called Jerusalem that was completely wiped out and has been rebuilt. And there is prophecy yet to be fulfilled that those were that call themselves Jews now, the Bible warns us that they are not, that they're of the synagogue of Satan. That prophecy is that in the end times, there will be an antichrist come. Christians need to decide whether or not they're going to believe the Bible or whether they're going to believe what the news commentator tells them they need to believe. Romans 8, he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward of the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. 
and that circumcision is of the heart and in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. I don't care what men say. Oh, well, according to the letter of the law, they're special. No, I care what God says, and he looks on the heart, on the inward man, and you're not a Jew if you say, I've fulfilled this, and my bloodline's that, and I converted to the Talmud. That doesn't make you a Jew according to God and the Bible. And obviously, he is the absolute highest standard. In fact, he says, he, he, here speaking of Israel, he says, neither are they the seed of Abraham, are they the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of flesh, look at this, these are not the children of God. Even if they could say, even if they could prove their bloodline, I'm from Benjamin, I'm from Judah, which they can't because God destroyed them and they were intermingled throughout the world. He says, your flesh does not make you God's children. Well, what makes me God's child? I would say belief in Christ would make you uh, God's child. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I'm sorry, I'm not sharing my screen here. I, I thought I was sharing the screen. Let me go back to that. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So who is a child of God? those that believe, and you're absolutely right. Let me just take a step back here. Romans chapter 9, neither because they're the seed of Abraham, right? They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. So who are God's chosen people? Well, they're those that have believed. Romans chapter 2, he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. It's in inwardly of the heart. Mm -hmm whose praise is of God. These verses are in the Bible, and Christians ignore them, and they just follow a political movement. Revelation chapter 2, this is very condemning. He says, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. If you say you're a Jew, but you don't believe in Jesus Christ, if you don't have the Christ, that's blasphemous against the Lord. I will make yeah. them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. These are very strong statements from the Lord. And listen, we I don't hate, I don't hate that false religion. I wish that the people that were in it that are looking for a Christ would understand that their Christ has already come. He loved them. He paid for their sins. Jesus fulfilled all of those prophecies. We live in a time even where I want you here. Let me let me show you this because we live in a time where people are looking for a political kingdom and they're waiting for this earthly kingdom. And they asked Jesus, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? This is kind of what people are looking for today, isn't it? Right, right. It is. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his power. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And here's the goal. We, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, that was the city in Judea, that was the Roman province, and in Samaria, the neighboring areas, and unto the uttermost part of the world. What are we supposed to do? Preach the gospel. This is the Great Commission. Go everywhere, preach the gospel. And then Jesus left. And he said, why stand you gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. We're waiting on the Lord to return in the air. He will set up his kingdom eventually, but we're not looking for that today. Politics is not the answer. Preaching the gospel is the answer. If you're a Christian and you get on your, whatever, your Twitter, your X, your uh, Instagram, your YouTube, and you're always talking about Donald Trump, how he's the only answer. You need to stop. You need to open the Bible. You need to preach the gospel. You need to realize that you need to get your neighbor saved more than you need to get him converted to vote like you. Right. Well, again, I'm I'm just going to, because the topic here is, um, you know, should Christians vote for Donald Trump or not? That's, you know, really the the name, the topic of this video. Um, someone comes along again 
and and says, well, you know, I've heard this about uh, Trump, right? That he's kind of like King Cyrus. You know, we have this this bad character, right. but he, for whatever reason, got you hear this all the time, and and they'll they'll also equate that. Look at look at what David did, but he was a man after God's own heart, and God used all of these um, interesting characters throughout the Bible. Many of them had flaws. Many of them did wicked things. And Donald Trump, well, yes, I acknowledge that Donald Trump has done wicked things, but God is using, I'm using quotation marks here, God is using Donald Trump uh, for his purposes. And what do you say to something like that? Well, God used Pharaoh. God <laughs> used Nebuchadnezzar. God has many times he's used a wicked nation to destroy a more wicked nation. God has used a wicked nation to destroy Israel when they were wicked. Right. You know, and if America doesn't repent and get back to the Lord, well, then God's going to use a more wicked nation to destroy us. And I don't wish for that. I don't think we can stop it by going in debt for sending bombs and bullets to all the NATO partners or all the other countries of the world. I don't think we can stop it by drafting our sons and our daughters and putting them in a in a military. I, I don't think we can stop it unless Christians, people that call themselves by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have to get back to the biblical fundamentals. He says, you've lost your first love. And he says, repent and do the first works. You know what the first works are? Preaching the gospel to your family and your neighbors and the people that you love that are on their way to hell. Amen. Well, I think that's uh, probably a good place for us to end this talk. I wanted to try to keep it under an hour this time, um, just so folks, you know, um, don't nod off. I know maybe we could be, I think you're a very good speaker though. And, and uh, that's, that's it's been educational for me to listen to you. It's also been kind of therapeutic because most of the preaching and teaching that I see, and I I shared some of that with you yesterday, um, is telling people you know that they can lose their salvation. Um, it it puts everything in doubt. Like how much do I need to do? Are you doing enough good works? Um, and you know, how do you know if you're really saved or not? Maybe you can close with a good, uh, you know, explanation for um, what I believe uh, would be considered something that we call uh, once saved, always saved, right? I think that's that's what I believe in, and a lot mm -hmm. of Christians still do, but I think now, over the past, I don't know how many years, people are always trying to add something to that formula. Right. Well, salvation is called a free gift. And when you get a birthday present or a Christmas present, they don't put the receipt in there and make you pay them back. If I had to do anything to get salvation, then it's not a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a free gift and it's eternal. It lasts forever. Uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. If I came to you bragging, I'm going to heaven because I quit smoking and joking and drinking and cussing and running around, and I started going to church and feeding the poor and taking care of my family and doing all this good stuff. I haven't told you about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a Christian, your salvation is dependent upon his works. You either believe that he is who he said he is, the son of God, and that he literally died for all of your sins. If you don't believe that he died for all of your sins, then you think there's a sin you can do to lose it. If you believe Jesus died for all of your sins, there's no sin that would cause you to lose it. In Titus 1-2, he says, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. In Hebrews 10, he says, once for all. It is once and for all. It's finished. In Revelation 3, he says that your name is written in the book of life, and no man can blot it out once it's in there. It is once saved, always saved, or you're not saved. And I'm not saying this to say, go live like hell. I'm not saying go and live a wicked lifestyle, but I'm saying that if you're trusting in your own works, then you are not saved. And many will say, well, I'm not trusting in my works, but you, you have to do the work. Faith without works is dead. Hey, let me tell you, a cell phone without a charge is dead, but it's still a cell phone. Salvation has always been by faith, and it will always be by faith. And if you feel like you don't have it, you may not. Now, I have several good YouTube videos, Directions to Heaven for Kids. It's a cartoon. 
or directions to heaven from Florida. That one goes a little more in depth, more for adults, both of, you know, showing the scriptures, teaching the concept. I would encourage you to watch those. Um, also this month at law of Liberty here, we're in Jacksonville, Florida, the whole month, I have a theme for every month and this month, it's going to be the truth of the gospel. So as we move into a new month, every Sunday, I'm going to have sermons focused on how to preach the gospel, how to know for sure that you're saved, how to talk to somebody without it being uncomfortable. Because listen, we ought to have compassion on others. In Jude, he says, of some having compassion, making a difference. And that's very important. You have to love the people. You have to pray for the people, have a desire. I mean, you're sacrificing your time to open the Bible and tell them how to be saved. But in Jude, he goes on, of some having compassion, making a difference, others save by fear, pulling them out of the fire. Uh, one time I was out knocking doors and preaching the gospel. It was in Texas, and I came up to the back of this truck, and these guys were, they had a gun at the truck, and they were, they looked like gangsters. Mm. And with a big old smile, I got in their face and I said, Hey, if somebody were to shoot you in the face, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? And they laughed and they just kind of, they thought it was fun, you know. And listen, others save with fear. Some people you have to, if you will, pardon the expression, scare the hell out of them. Right. Right. I believe in fire and brimstone preaching. We need to preach the truth. Hell is forever. And once you get there, there's no getting out. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. The battle is real and time is short. We need to get out there and preach the gospel. And so the focus of the next month in the preaching on the Law of Liberty Church on our on our YouTube channel will all be available. I'm going to have handouts and illustrations. I want to make it as easy as possible for somebody that's never been a soul winner to feel confident that they have the verses and the ability and the Holy Spirit with them to go out and knock on a stranger's door and lead them to faith in Christ for salvation. It's easier than you think. Uh, the number one person that needs to get saved is a Christian <laughs> because yeah. most Christians are trusting in their works or their religions or, and, and they don't really know it happens all the time. Are you, are you, Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, are you okay? Are you hundred percent sure you're going to heaven? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. It blows my mind. How many people claim to be a Christian, but they are not sure. The most common thing they will say is, well, nobody can know for sure. And let me share this verse with you where we can know for sure. This is a great opener at the door. I like to show this verse to people. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Sorry, I got the wrong. Let's try that now. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know what? The answer is in the verse. How do I get saved? Yeah, that's Faith as alone. clear as clear as day right there. What's that? First John five thirteen. Yes, sir. First John five thirteen. That's correct. Yeah. So again, um, great stuff here as as always. Um, just to hear such a clear gospel presentation throughout any topic. Um, of course, we were talking about why Christians probably shouldn't vote for Donald Trump, and it's good that you've found your candidate and you've got your sign. So if I drive by your church, will we see that? Will we see that sign out front? There's a good possibility of it. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's I had other, I had some other signs that were, uh, you know, vote for Jesus, you know, and it had a QR code. You could scan it and it would take you to the, uh, the gospel presentation. Let me see. I can pull that up. Let's see. That's, that's just you a great our, idea, especially this year you when you, you get such sign. bad choices and, Okay, there you, and there you have it. QR code and um, so, Pastor. Again, your church is in Jacksonville. Uh, what time? If I were to go to your church in the morning, wh when does? Uh, I'm sure you have a a very good Bible study and then preaching, and you probably have a Sunday evening service, correct? Yeah. So the way we do it is we have a ten o'clock family integrated Sunday school. Everybody together. We are a family integrated church. We don't believe in separating the family and pulling them apart. We want them to grow together. Uh, most of the time, I will preach that Sunday school class. Sometimes Brother Chad or one of the other men in the church will preach that. 
So 10 o'clock is a Sunday school. 11 o'clock is the preaching hour. After that, there's lunch. Uh, we have a good facility for lunch and hanging out with families. And usually there's enough. We always invite any visitors to stay and eat with us. And then two o'clock, we go out soul winning. We knock doors and preach the gospel. And then five o'clock, we're back again for the evening service. And then Wednesday night, we have a Bible study. We go through a, a book of the Bible on Wednesdays. And right now we're going through the book of Revelation. And that's my favorite book. It's really exciting. Uh, what's it say that the the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy? And there's a lot of neat things in prophecy. And, and tonight we'll be talking about Revelation 7, the resurrection, the 144,000. And we're going to continue going through that. And then we'll go to another book whenever we finish. So uh, if you have any questions, I have, uh, I'll put my contact info up here and feel free to reach out and call me or look us up online. Uh, leave us a good Google review. All the people that were mad at us for, uh, knocking on their door during COVID to preach the gospel, left us negative reviews. There's been some haters out there on YouTube that left us negative reviews. So anybody that wants to give us a positive one would certainly be appreciated. And any visitors are welcome as well. All right. Now, before, before I let you go, though, is there, say somebody really appreciates what your church is doing. Uh, they don't live near your church. They can't get to Jacksonville, uh, but they want to donate to the church. They'd like to give some money to the church. Can they do that? Yeah. Um, if you just go to the YouTube channel, it's got uh, this link to a Givelify. That's, um, I think we've got a PayPal on there too, but that's a pretty easy way. Um, we have some folks that do that just to automate it so that they can uh, give to the work that we're doing. And we, we go to the flea markets, we give out Bibles and preach the gospel. And so anything you give is going to go right back to people. You know, yeah. so you give all kinds of stuff away, right? You've got merchandise. You got yeah. like t-shirts and all kinds of cool gear. This was a Father's Day gift. You know, we give these away. Um, I've got Once Saved, Always Saved and a bunch of other types of t-shirts and bumper stickers and Bibles and handouts. And um, I, I believe we should, well, it talks about liberally, a liberal distribution to the saints. So I'm very liberal when it comes to giving stuff away because it's all God's. And he gave it to me to give away, to be a steward over, not to be scared and just sit on it, you know, like a squirrel with a nut. And I'm supposed to give it away and just trust that the Lord will continue to provide. The more I give, the more he gives me. So I don't worry about it. So. Amen. All right. Listen, pray us out, Pastor, and uh, right. that'll that'll do it for this episode. Thanks so much for being here. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you so much. And I do thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I pray that anybody listening to this that's saved, that you would just put a fire in their soul to learn how to preach the gospel, to get out there and pull souls out of the fire. Lord, the time is short and the, the politics are getting weird. And Lord, help us to not have a false hope in a false prophet or in politics. Lord, thank you for dying for our sins. We love you so much. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.